Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight I've got a new ship. I am finally going up the German destroyer line and I am at tier number five, which means we can start making videos for you guys. And we are in the Gaid. I apologize if that's not correct. We'll just call it Eddie, okay? Eddie is its name. <laughs> From now on, the Gaid or Gaid is the Eddie. So, uh, without further ado, let's get down to it. Now, first we have Maximilian Von Spee as our commander. His uh, trait is Misty Morning, which gives you more smoke generator, uh, or gives you a quicker reload on the smoke generator. Then we've got Eric Bay and Reginald Tierwit for our inspirations. Eric Bay is a 2.7% detectability boost. And then Reginald Tierwit gives us our faster reload time on our torps as also, the steering gear uh, impairment chance is reduced, so you're not as likely to get your rudder knocked out. Uh, we've got subsurface venture, we've got fragile threat, we've got torpedo range, or shoot, torpedo safari, <laughs> and we've got destroy or be destroyed. Now this one's a little bit different. I, I could potentially swap this for this. Uh, I'll have to ask you guys to you know refer to you guys for that one. Not sure if that should be what I do or not, but let me know. And uh, we've got unstoppable, of course, because being able to keep moving while your engine is busted is a huge, huge help. <laughs> so uh, let's get over to the stats of the ship. Upgrades and loadout. We want to go over here. Uh, as you can see, I'm running a uh, Christmas camo for less detectability and also extra fire dispersion. And then we've got maximum movement speed bu uh, buff over here just to help out a little bit more. Uh, she's a big girl, so she needs a little bit more maneuver or mobility than most destroyers. Survivability, she's got a lot of hit points, 15,260. That's like tier seven any other destroyer. <laughs> that's, that's pretty crazy. It's a lot of hit points for a tier five destroyer. Artillery, we've got 150 millimeter guns, and by the way, they are good. I like them a lot. Uh, they reload a little slow, but I mean, they're 150 millimeter, that's to be expected. And I've got a couple of things that reduce the or increase the reload time of the guns, so that doesn't help. But they're still pretty good in a fight. I don't have any problem against most ships, in, or at least most destroyers in a fight. Um, torpedoes, we've got eight on uh, be two different two different turrets for each 533 millimeter the reload time isn't the best at 77.3 but it doesn't seem too bad actually uh the turn time on the torpedo tubes not bad maximum damage is a little low 13,700 instead of having those 610 millimeters or whatever the uh americans and the um the oh what do you call it? god bless america the japanese <laughs> those bigger torpedoes uh, but still these are these are fully capable of packing a punch and we've got their torpedo range up to nine kilometers which does help quite a bit now i'm not sure if i had this commander this fully upgraded back when uh i made the video so keep that in mind aa defense uh i don't know it's just we don't use it so we don't need to worry about it uh maximum sp i haven't shot down any planes that i know of with this so doesn't seem to be that great <laughs> maximum speed is 38.6 knots without the boost and then you can boost that up of course turning radius is pretty good and concealment is five and a half kilometers which isn't bad but it's not amazing uh, like i said she's a big girl so uh, you're going to be able to sneak past most things but you're going to get spotted by japanese or american concealment builds or actually no the american concealment's crap so it'll be Japanese and the British concealment is going to be better than yours. But other than that, you're pretty, pretty well off. Now, I forgot to show you guys the uh, actual. Oh, there we go. We've got all of the mods, obviously. And then for um, the equipment, we've got aiming systems and we have steering gears rather than propulsion now like i said she's a big girl she she takes a minute to get up to speed but that's why you have speed boost uh steering gears seems to be really good for this because you're getting into a lot of gunfights, and it's nice to be able to to dodge rounds um preferably 
So, with that being said, let's get on to the gameplay. Alright, now because of uh, the fact that it's a lower tier battle and there's not going to be as much damage in them, I figure, why not give you guys two good uh, videos? And so I did. I was having quite a bit of fun in the guide, or the Eddie. I'm just going to call it Eddie. Uh, if you get offended by that, apologize, but not really. It's Eddie from here on out. So the Eddie is, it's a good gunboat. It really is. I am not built for a gunfight in this thing. I set up for the longer range torpedoes to try to get the most out of my, my ship as possible, uh, because in a destroyer, your torpedoes mean a lot. You don't want to be getting into gunfights with everything. But I'm going to show you just how, how good the guns are in this match, because we're going to get into a gunfight with just about everything at some point, I think. Uh, if I remember the match pretty well, you'd, you'd probably think it was Spartan. How would you not know the match by now? I mean, come on, it was just a couple minutes ago, right? Eh, it's been a couple hours, actually. But, you know, rendering time and all, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. It takes me a while to get these videos, whether it's A, procuring the video, actually going out and recording a video that's good enough for you guys to watch, or B, sitting there and cutting it down and getting it ready for uh, rendering, then I gotta render it, then I gotta put it in Premiere Pro, and then I've gotta narrate and all of the stuff and splice everything to, it's, it's, you know, it's a bit of work! But I appreciate you guys watching and you guys seem to enjoy it, so that's why I do it. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, we're going to push up here towards A right off the bat. This is not my favorite map in the world. You guys know that. This is North and it's Domination. Big surprise, right? So we're going to push up, get into A as quickly as possible. As a destroyer, it is paramount when you spawn on North at A to get in there as quickly as possible and get the advantage on the enemy team while they're out in the middle of the open water and ready to be shot. That is your job. So I am steaming full steam ahead to try to get in there and see what we can do. Now, they do have two destroyers. I don't remember exactly what they are. But you're going to see me make some mistakes in this video too. So feel free to leave a comment below making fun of me for at least one of them. I give you full credit. Hey, look, it's a Mayhan. Kill him! Kill him with fire! Kill that thing! Everybody shoot the Mayhan! Come on, Spartan, get all the guns on him. Aim well. Oh god, we're being rammed. That's my bad. Sorry, dude. Sorry. We break his his steering. We get out of the way of our cruiser. Notice the cruiser actually started to turn with us because uh, we managed to... You know, we're a big girl. Like I said... Oh, wait, that sounds terrible. The, the ship is a big girl. <laughs> now, we pop our hydro. Why? Because there's destroyers afoot. And people need to see the torps. And there are torps everywhere. So hopefully, everybody sees these torps well in advance and able to get out of the way. Now, the enemy has already lost the destroyer. I have no idea. I'm sitting here firing at the Mayhan. I see the big angry smoke screen over there. I'm going to absolutely rip this Mayhan apart. He has no chance, or the Mahan, depending on who you talk to. Now, I see the shots coming through the smoke, and I'm thinking that's a destroyer. Uh, I'm wrong. It's not. So, I'm thinking there's somebody hiding in that smoke screen. I'm just going to go ahead and throw torps in there and see if I can flush them out. And, in fact, I'm just a dingus. And <laughs> there is somebody in there, but it's not who you think. Now, we've got the Britannia spotted. Their destroyers are no longer an issue. They're both dead. Which is exactly what you don't want to get into when you're in a destroyer, is to get killed that early in the match. It's not preferable. But, it is it is for us in this instance. Oh, it's a furry taco. How you doing, furry taco? <laughs> uh, yeah, you need to die. Preferably in a hurry. Notice that I load up the armor piercing. We have 150 millimeter guns, which means even at this range, technically if I had 127s, I'd be able to citadel them even faster. But at this range, we will have no trouble punching citadels into the side of this thing. And sure enough, we get our first citadel hit. We're not the only one. He's getting absolutely pummeled. But we're going to keep firing. We want to try to hit back where we did. He's turning towards us. And then he's going to do something incredibly dumb, which is turn the other way. Which can only mean one thing. He's trying to torp us. So... Rather than sit around and wait for him, we get another Citadel off of him, thank you. And, are we going to get the kill? I mean, yeah, it's it's not even a question. And we get a third Citadel off of him. 
The armor piercing, 150 millimeter guns, not bad. I like them. <laughs> it's definitely nice against light cruisers. Now against heavier cruisers, you want to get a little closer. But uh, if you're getting that close, you might as well just torp them. So with that being said, we have a Graf Spe, we have a Britannia, and a Queen Elizabeth? Normandy, sorry. Normandy. <laughs> and this is just like open season at this point. Who do I kill first, right? And the funny thing is, I am not intending on torping somebody here. But I end up torping them instead of the guy that I was trying to torp. It's because they were like racing towards the torps. It's like, I want to get sunk by Spartan's torps. No, I want to get sunk by Spartan's torps. And luckily, for me, that means as bad as I am at torpedoing things, I get some hits. <laughs> now, you can see, here I'm thinking Graf Spe, but then he's starting to turn. He's a cruiser. Not the best play as far as torpedoes. Oh, hello, Britannia. Yes, please. I think I will. Now, we go ahead and give a little in front of the lead and behind the lead and just hope that we're able to get a shot on him. Now, keep your eye on that Normandy. That Normandy is sailing right directly into the path of those torpedoes. And not just sailing into the path of those torpedoes. He's the only one sailing into the path of those torpedoes because the Britannia is like, I need to turn away. There's a, there's a destroyer over here. It's not going to end well. I just have a feeling. Now, the guy in the Normandy obviously didn't have a feeling, but he's about to. Because in just about three seconds, he's going to explode. <laughs> One, two, activated. three. And down he goes. Devastating strike. Five torpedo hits. That's insane. That's a lot of damage. Somebody get the flex seal guy. Now, here I've got to make a choice. Now, sure, we've still got the Britannia over there, right? Normandy's gone. The Graf Spe is a cruiser. Not as it not only is it just any cruiser, but it's not the most armored cruiser. It's got big heavy duty guns, battleship guns, uh, 283 millimeter guns, take a while to reload, that sort of thing. Now we do get two shatters, one bounce off of them, but I've loaded up the armor piercing because I know that I can penetrate him while he's giving me this much side, and there's 2442 damage. That's what I'm talking about. You don't want to be getting into a fight with a rapid-fire gun, and he's shooting back armor-piercing at a 283mm German guns, which means he's, he's struggling to hit anything, let alone a destroyer who's not just sailing in a complete straight line. Now, I throw my torpedoes out there, because obviously I would, and I go ahead and account for the fact that I expect him to turn back on himself, and he does. But the Graf Schmidt also has uh, hydroacoustic, which means he's going to be able to see my torps. But then he, he goes right back to giving me a full broadside. I don't understand it, but I'll take it. <laughs> Another 1,900 damage? How much damage can we farm off this guy? Okay, he hit us, but it's armor piercing, so he overpins. It's 283 millimeters. Hey, look at that. Those torps actually look pretty good, or at least one of them does. And we catch him with the first torp, causing flooding. And then he gets riddled by a guy. So we go ahead and start firing at him again. We've got armor piercing still loaded, and we managed to bounce off of him. We're at a bad angle. He tried to torp us. No, no, <laughs> no problem to avoid that. And now he's given us too much angle again. So instead of bouncing off the site, well, we get one penetration there. Not yeah. preferable, but he's going to get more if he stays at this sort of angle. And sure enough, we get one more overpin and one more penetration. He's still charging us. He takes another nasty hit while he's solely focused on me, and down he goes, leaving just three battleships left to die. And at this point, I look back, and the Britannia over there doesn't have much health because I was contemplating actually engaging him. I hit my engine boost to try to make up the difference. There's one solo battleship over there who has no health left and he's trying to engage two battleships and that's not going to end well for him. We have 77,000 damage and I think we've done pretty well. We've got three kills, managed to get rid of a cruiser, managed to get actually two cruisers. We got rid of the furry, ta yeah, the furry taco too. So we got rid of two cruisers with this thing using armor piercing. That's, that's the kind of fun that I like to have in destroyers. It's not always about torping everything. It's just about having fun. 
destroyer play is so much faster, so much different than battleship play. And yes, you can make an argument either direction. I'm not going to try to spark a, a comment war down below. Well, actually, I might because that's engagements on the video. So yeah, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to try to start a war between battleship captains and destroyer captains or cruiser captains or anything. All right, I don't want that. Every class is beneficial. Every class is fun in its own way. And that's why I like to play all the classes. I'm not the best at Destroyer, obviously. I'm not the best at Cruiser, obviously. I'm not the best at Battleship, obviously. But I can hold my own in just about anything. And I know how to get the most out of my ships. Doesn't always translate in the, the game. <laughs> but I know how to do it. I just don't always manage to pull it off. Uh, but we realize that these guys are pushing around the side of the island. We're going to go ahead and cut straight across the center and see if we can head them off at the other side. By the time we get over there, they'll be in perfect distance to torp in theory. That's the thought. And we are going to be in position. However, my teammate who is in a battleship who is crossing B right now is heading right for those two battleships. And he's going to be in the perfect position to take advantage of some stupid positioning by the enemy battleships. And I say that, and you guys are probably thinking, well, that's kind of rough, Spartan. Why do you go say that that's stupid position? You, you will understand in a moment. <laughs> what happens when you're in two battleships and you're versus two battleships and a destroyer? You usually play conservatively, try to bide your time. The enemy has two caps. You have to make some sort of move here. You know you're going to have to kill them. So you've got to be careful. You've got to utilize your armor, your, your low health. You've been beat up. You've been in a battle. You can't afford to go full broadside and get obliterated. Unfortunately, these guys didn't get the memo. Because I say unfortunately because I'm greedy. I, I make YouTube videos and people want to see damage. So I get ready to get ready to torp these guys. And the first guy gets obliterated. Fuso versus Fuso. Fuso wins. <laughs> but that's, I'm like, that's fine. Okay, they get one, I get one. It's fire. It's fair. I was hoping for the Kraken, but I'll take it. I'll take it. And then, just as I'm about to get the torps off, watch what happens to this guy. Oh, nope, that's high explosive. He's fine. He takes some damage, but we're good. We're good. Wait for it. Come on, Spartan, get the torps off. He's going to be beautiful. Shot out. How he knew I was getting ready to come out there, I have no idea. Maybe he was shooting at the other guy. But uh, I get the shot out, and then the Fuso snipes him too. <laughs> it's like, come on. Really? Really? And both of those guys were literally showing their broadsides as soon as the guy come around the corner. So the Fusos was like, I think I will. But we finished top of the leaderboard. We did pretty well. Now, this one's going to be a shorter replay, but it's a fun one. It's fast-paced all the way through, and it showcases some stupidity, but also some fun. Uh, I'm going to make some good choices, and I'm going to make uh, some really interesting choices later. So we're going to push up towards B right off the bat, right? And then we're going to find the enemy destroyers, and we are going to uh, do our best to help our team. And that's something that a lot of destroyer players don't get. And don't get me wrong, I'm not the best destroyer player. I tend to get killed sometimes a little too quickly before I get going. Uh, but... I've found, especially in the German or the British line, where you, you actually, the Americans, it works really well too because they have really good guns, but, but the German and the British line are a lot more forgiving and allowing for aggressive gameplay in a destroyer, especially the German line due to the fact that you have a ridiculous amount of hit points for its tier. This thing has 15,670 hit points. I don't even think my tier 7 Kagura or Fletcher have that many. Now, I know the Lightning does, or close to it, but I don't think the other two do. But, I'm getting ahead of myself. I do really look forward to the next two tiers, I will say that. If, if they continue to get better, I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> um, but we see a Texas right off the bat, we spot the enemy, and that's a big thing. Getting the enemy spotted early in compromising positions to the rest of your team. Our team should have some nasty crossfire opportunities here to get good shots on the enemy team. And you can see the shells flying overhead say exactly that. They do have good shots. And without looking at damage and stuff, we notice that, hey, look, there is a destroyer off to our right. I'm going to go ahead, pop smoke initially, and then I'm going to keep going. 
I, I haven't managed to get myself detected other than through the, uh, the eddy on the right side of me, but we're going to push up through. Now that he's in the cap, I cannot afford to stay here because there's just too much chance of me getting spotted, and here I accidentally torped my teammate. <laughs> I mean, I thought that he was going to be passed, but uh, unfortunately he does take a torp for me. And so we go ahead and throw out all the torpedoes out there ready for that Ioba who's about to uh, sail in the gap. Now, if you've seen destroyers coming through, and he already took one torp. You can see he's, he's flooding. He's not having a good day. Uh, and then he's going to sail right into my torps as if he didn't learn his lesson. I don't get it. But it's fine because I'll take it. Anything I can get to take him out, I will appreciate it. That's one less cruiser that I have to worry about. But you, you've you seen the destroyers. We spot, we were spotted. Now, I switch over to high explosive, making sure that I'm ready to fight the Eddie on the enemy team here. Uh, it was actually a Fabuki that was in the cap. That was my bad. But the Eddie's right here. And we're going to go ahead and get a good first salvo, just absolutely punish him. And he's obviously trying to torp. We've got a little bit left on our hydroacoustic here, so we're able to spot the torps early for the teammates, slow down, turn to avoid, and the teammates finish him off. So we made a good play there. Now we've got the Normandy, who is turning around and running away. Now why is that important? Knowing that he's turning and running allows me to have all the time in the world to turn my ship back into B and secure the cap. Remember, this is domination, and as a destroyer, one of your jobs is to make sure you get those cap points. You're the fastest, most mobile ships in the game. You must make sure you try to get the points. Because if you don't, the enemy's going to get them and they're going to win. Now about this time, my teammate behind me in the battleship starts freaking out about the points. He's like, oh my god, they're going to cap, they're going to win. Somebody's going to start. Just like, relax, dude. <laughs> We're fine. Now the Fabuki here gets spotted going in. I don't know why he thought this was a good idea. He clearly had the ability to spot the other destroyer on my team and the battleship, and he still sailed right in there and got himself detected. That's not a good play. Worse than that, he's put himself in a compromising position. His best bet would be to turn left and get the heck out of there between the two islands. He's not going to do that. You know how I know he's not going to do that? Because he's going to keep capping. So now that he's going to do that, I get to play a little game of cat and mouse with him. My last locate or my last known heading was for the front of his island, right? Makes sense. That's where I'm going, right? Wrong. I'm going to go to the back of the island. Why? Because it's not where he'd be expecting me with his giant torpedoes that could one shot kill me if I screw up. And then I'm going to absolutely screw the pooch here. <laughs> Not on the destroyer so much, but I I made sure to make sure I killed the destroyer, right? At worst case scenario, I killed this destroyer. I, I failed to realize there's a battleship on my left. And so I get a good shot here and just obliterate the guy. And just as we launch our torpedoes, we get another shot into him and he's dead. <laughs> the team hit him good and then we finished him. And now I just wasted all of my torpedoes on a ship that's already dead. Had I held my fire on the torpedoes and just used my guns, which I knew I could win that battle all day every day and twice on Sunday, then I could have used them for these, these battleships a little earlier, especially the Texas who was right there. Now we took a nasty hit from one of these guys and that's not preferable. But now we know that they're spotted by the team because we've got teammates on both sides of the island. So what I'm going to do is uh, use my smoke that's about to pop back off. Wait for it. Ding. And now as soon as we start that, we're going to go ahead and start setting fires. Now he's already burning. It's just a matter of time before he uh, goes ahead and changes everything up. And his damage control procs and he's able to get unfired. But our job is to keep him burning. No matter what. So you can see his damage control just procced. He's, he's put out all of the fires at one time. He had more than one fire burning. And now he has no fires burning. And wait for it. Now that we know his damage control is going to be on cooldown, all we got to do is set a fire and he's going to burn for a very, very long time. <laughs> he's starting to get close to the edge of my range. 
and just when you thought all hope was lost, we fire one last salvo before he gets completely out of range, and, wait for it, we get the fire. <laughs> Sometimes you just get lucky. Is it better to be lucky or good? <laughs> you know? I, I mean, I guess you gotta, oh god. Hello, bear. Oh, he's got no health. We're fine. We're fine. Hey, look, it's Normandy. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should uh, engage him now that he's not running from us. <laughs> what do you think? Now, we've got uh, another fire on the Normandy. And so we switched to armor piercing to get ready because a Normandy has very little armor compared to other battleships. So... I go ahead, load the armor piercing out of our 150 millimeter guns, and start scoring some decent hits, and oh my god, that was not me, by the way. <laughs> I, I know, I, I, I'm sure you had no idea that that was not me. But we're getting some decent penetration, not not a lot, we're getting overpins, actually. If you're overpinning a battleship with, high, or with 150 millimeter guns, there's something wrong. I'm sorry, <laughs> but there is. I mean, seriously, 150 millimeter guns and we're overpinning a battleship now here i overthink it i put a shot on the trajectory that he's heading and a shot way back behind because i figure he's gonna slow down i was spotted when i when i fired the first set of torps so if he's paying attention he's gonna be slowing down or turning and so i fire the second set behind thinking he's gonna do that uh, unfortunately, he does not do that. He maintains course, sails in an exact straight line, same speed. And the good news is my front torps are just begging for it. And we are going to catch him. Look at all of those torps in the water. We're not the only one going to catch him. Because our torps don't do as much damage and he's got torpedo reduction, we're going to get, you know, 8,000 to 10,000 damage per torp. We're going to hit him three times, take all of his health, and in true Spartan style, leave him with just enough health for somebody else to kill. <laughs> because we're not greedy, are we? We don't get all the kills. But I think that was a pretty good showing of the, the Eddie. Uh, we're top of the leaderboard, 2,600 base XP, three kills. And uh, so if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.